A hearty good afternoon and welcome to the session on common ENT problems in children. We are glad to have Dr. Chawa among us today to help us understand the topic. We will take us through that and more in this session today. Doctor, you have the stage. Yeah, thank you, Nikita. Please. Hello. Doctor, doctor, you can start with the session. Oh, I have to talk starting. Sorry? I have to speak or somebody ask any questions, I have to tell. No, or no, can no. I you, have, you have to. You have to. Okay. Yeah, I will do it. I am myself, Dr. Chawa Anjanailu. I am senior consultant ENT surgeon. I am very much experienced in dealing with the pediatric problems, pediatric ear, nose, throat problems. The common problems are the adenoid and tonsil problems. In neonates, some airway problems like laryngomalacia, rarely subglottic narrowing or subglottic stenosis. The other emergency problems are common, foreign bodies in the nose, foreign bodies in the ear, foreign bodies in the throat, rarely foreign bodies in the bronchi. The common foreign body problem most of the times is the nasal foreign body or coins in the cricopharynx that is upper airway that is upper part of upper part of the esophagus. Coming to the common airway problems nowadays children are facing with the Adenoid hypertrophy problem. Now, adenoid hypertrophy is so common, many children are suffering with it. This is basically mainly due to increased viral infection load in the society and increased pollution in the atmosphere. These pollutants and viral infections directly attack the adenoid tissue, it causes the hypertrophy. In olden days, most of the times viral infections are not so much and pollution also less. Most of the times acute attacks will subside and after that patient is completely asymptomatic or with very less symptoms. But nowadays, because of the persistent pollution that we can't change, persistent pollution in the atmosphere and more viral infections, many children suffering with the adenoid hypertrophy with the symptoms of the nasal obstruction, mouth breathing, snoring, sometimes ear pain and ear discharge. That means if patient has ear pain and ear discharge means that infection or inflammation spread from the nose through the East Asian tube into the middle ear that we call it as a otitis media. If we neglect this adenoid problem or breathing problem, then sometimes child may have serious problems. One, as patient is not sleeping properly, not going into deep sleep daytime, they will be, they are irritable. They can't perform their school activities very well. They can't perform in sports activities because of their um, lack of energy due to breathing problem. The second one is if infection spread to the ear, it causes the ear discharge, mainly hearing loss. If it persists for a long time, middle ear get adherent and uh, oscules get damaged and they will have adhesive arthritis media very difficult to treat and unsafe arthritis media that is cholesteatoma where patient need extensive mastoid surgery. Coming to the other chronic issues, if you neglect this mouth, this nasal obstruction and snoring, patient may develop the cardiomyopathy, rare 
but a serious problems like cardiomyopathy pulmonary hypertension these are the rare problems but there is a chance child may have if the problem is severe and persist for many years the other one is the tonsillitis problem children with large tonsils may have more are more prone to the infections because of the large surface area big crypt size in tonsillar patients patient sometimes complains of throat pain many times they will refuse to eat because that foreign food materials will stick in the tonsil and it is difficult to swallow them if the tonsil size is great for so they eat very slowly even if we are putting we are giving the feed they will refuse the feed immediately they will take very very slowly and big tonsils sometimes lead to the complications like peritonsillar abscess and persistent lymphadenopathy main thing is abscess this is very serious problem if recurrent tonsillitis happens sometimes it may spread into the peritonsillar space and cause the peritonsillar abscess so we should not neglect either adenoid hypertrophy tonsillar hypertrophy the children are symptomatic many parents they have the doubt that if we remove adenoid tonsillitis adenoids and tonsils children immunity may reduce or any other complications no usually if non problematic tonsils and adenoids no need to remove but if it is creating problem it is better to remove there is no harm and children's immunity will not come down if you remove the problematic tonsils instead of that child will have good health because their breathing will improve their recurrent attacks will come down infectious attacks sometimes these persistent tonsillar infection may lead to the heart valve infections cause the rheumatic heart disease all these things so it is better to remove the problematic tonsils and adenoids child will grow in a very nicely and healthy way the other thing is nowadays children are suffering with the voice problems also especially those children who speak loudly who cries loudly who who talk loudly if we examine we find the nodules on the vocal cords these nodules most of the times will subside with the medical treatment but always if child has why change do the laryngoscopic evaluation because in some children there there is a chance they will have the respiratory papillomatous disease this respiratory papillomatous disease if it increase it cause the strider and life threatening emergencies also so whenever you find the respiratory papillomatosis remove that papilloma disease and keep the patient always on follow up most of the times when children reach 13 to 15 years age it will subside till that time you have to take care of that growths you check every 3 months or 6 months whenever patient will have symptoms the other common issue is the otitis media this is mostly due to the otit no, adenoid hypertrophy recurrent cold once these infections comes down either by removing adenoid tissue or by developing ch- child immunity most of the times this otitis media attacks will come down but if the child has any hearing loss always intervene if it will not subside with the medical management we can diagnose the hearing problem by audiogram and we can check the miller status by the impedance test where if there is a beaker means fluid accumulation and confirm by the ct scan if ct scan shows there is a extensive secretions in the middle ear do the meringotomy and remove the secretions put the grommet 
most of the time children will have adenoid hypertrophy and otitis media together so we do adenoidectomy and grommet insertions the emergency problem mainly is the nasal foreign body simple thermocoil ball, uh, balls not harmful but if the child put battery cells in the nose we have to remove immediately otherwise it will erode the mucosa it cause septal de destruction and turbinate uh, mucosal injury and uh, other tissues surrounding tissues also rarely if battery is close to the middle meatus it may erode into the eye and cause the visual disturbance or vision loss also so if foreign body is battery you have to remove immediately as early as possible if thermocol balls or some uh, buttons this you can remove as early as possible if it stays also no harm for one day especially if child has nasal bleeding with the foul smelling discharge from the nose always suspect the foreign body get examination get examination by the nasal endoscopy if need ct scan these two things will reveal the rhinolith or foreign body in the nose if you find in the test these foreign bodies remove immediately either in opd or in operation procedure room the other one is many children they have the problem of the recurrent nasal bleed self limited nasal bleed we call especially summers in summers a hot dry weather that septal mucosa will be dry crust formation happens whenever child pick the nose or forcefully sneeze that crust will come out and underlying blood vessel will bleed most of the times it stops spontaneously but rarely bleeding may be more because if the blood vessel size is more or if there are any telangiectatic vessels or if there is a sharp spur the deviated nasal septum with a spur septal spur in this situation the bleeding may be more and it may persist for a long time if there are small bleed recurrent but once in a week once in a month or once in 3 4 months no need to worry but if it bleeds regularly daily or alternate days or within week 2 3 times check with nasal endoscopy especially at the time of bleeding or immediately patient comes after bleeds check where is that bleeding point or blood vessel cauterize that usually we can cauterize and stop the bleed with the chemical either silver nitrate or trichloroacetic acid if not subside we do either electro cautery or like electro cautery rarely the bleed recurs even after that we do the septoplasty to induce fibrosis submucosal that we call it as submucosal fibrosis and fibrosis of the blood vessels it will stop the bleed so in children the common problems are the adenotonsillitis adenotonsillar hypertrophy with breathing problems nasal bleeding otitis media with the ear discharge and hearing loss and foreign bodies if any kind in the upper part of the esophagus immediately we have to remove with the endoscope it is, should not stay for a long time if it stays for a long time it cause persistent pressure on the mucosa and mucosal ulceration there is a chance of the stenosis if there is a foreign body in the bronchus you have to remove immediately otherwise foreign body granuloma happens small bronchi also get closed into pneumonia happens so if any child having recurrent pneumonia or one sided lung collapse do immediately ct scan or virtual bronchoscopy with the ct scan and uh, diagnose the problem most of the times neonates is the mucus plug children is the foreign body both we can remove mucus plugs we can remove with the bronchoscopy same way foreign bodies also we can remove with the bronchoscope under general anesthesia never neglect that foreign body in the bronchus
whenever you have suspicion don't treat for long time also if you find not responding or recurring very frequently pneumonia is always keep in mind the suspicion of the foreign body and remove that if that is there remove it and the young adults especially male patients if the patient has any nasal obstruction with bleed always suspect nasopharyngeal angiofibroma around 13 to 16 years age boy came comes with the nasal obstruction and bleed do always nasal endoscopy evaluation to check nasopharyngeal angiofibroma because in young males or adolescent males this angiofibroma sir very common if there is any swelling in the neck especially lymphadenitis first you evaluate treat accordingly if there is a persistent lymph node always do the biopsy if possible do fnac if not possible do biopsy and uh, get histological evaluations in neonates especially 3 weeks 4 weeks babies if there is a severe noisy breathing and need the cpap with high pressure always suspect laryngomalacia if you diagnose laryngomalacia treat it is very easily treatable condition very simple surgery it will give excellent results simply release the ae fold and reduce the size of the epiglottis improve the opening of the glottic airway gives excellent results and the patient will be fine so laryngomalacia is the condition where we can if you diagnose early you can treat very simple way always in laryngomalacia case rule out the gastroesophageal reflex if the gastroesophageal reflex is severe wound healing is less so always do some milk scan study also to check the severity of the reflex also so once you release you do supraglottoplasty give anti antacids for long time at least 3 to 6 months more difficult condition is the subglottic stenosis most of the babies their subglottis is narrow if there is a stenosis it is difficult to only thing you do is the tracheostomy first immediately tracheostomy save the baby's life sometimes even one day baby same after birth if they have the strider breathing difficulty if tube is not going inside for intubation do immediately tracheostomy then evaluate mostly in that case there is a subglottic stenosis in subglottic stenosis after that one or two years three years you start the reconstruction or opening of the subglottis in neonates it is difficult their lumen is very small it is difficult after three four years of age we do the anterior wall reconstruction post wall reconstruction if there is a glottic stenosis you release the glottic stenosis and do the airway repair the other rare condition is the tracheo esophageal fistula if the patient is having recurrent pneumonia and cough while eating suspect this tracheo esophageal fistula diagnose with the gastrographin study milk scan study endoscopic evaluations and repair the tracheo esophageal fistula and some children but rarely this salivary gland tumors also happens this we can remove and baby is fine or children are fine the other more important other rare but important condition is the cystic fibrosis in cystic fibrosis patient have nasal polyps along with the other recurrent lung infections also in this case you, you patient may need repeated endoscopic sinus surgery to remove the polyps and improve the airway but always ask the patient to do neti wash or jal neti that will prevent or reduce the chance of the polyps so surgery regular follow 
and the nasal douching are very important for the cystic fibrosis with the nasal polyps cases. In some, some children, there is a visual disturbance due to the sinus pathology also. Either it may be inflammatory or tumorous condition, which may be at the orbital apex, medial wall of the orbit and into the nose. So in any, pay, any children, if he has any proptosis, do the radiological evaluation. If any tumor, do the biopsy and confirm the diagnosis treat accordingly either by surgery, if malignancy, other measures. So these are the common and rare ENT problems in the children. The more common, most common problem nowadays is the adenoid hypertrophy with the arthritis media or adenotonsillar hypertrophy with the arthritis media. Anything more, ma'am? Hello, doctor. Are you done with the session? Yeah, I spoke in manner. Really, I am not understanding what because I thought people will come into live and they will. It is not the thing. I have to speak everything. I don't know really. There what is someone. Is. There is someone who is asking question. Please answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If the child is suffering with the blocked nose recurrently, that is mainly due to the adenoid hypertrophy and turbinate hypertrophy. We have to do nasal endoscopic evaluation in this baby. It is very simple test. In this we, can, we know the reason for the blocked nose. So once in 15 days you are getting means mostly this is adenoid hypertrophy and turbinate hypertrophy. With the medicines it will subside. Once we stop the medicines it will recur. Nowadays, children's adenoid hypertrophy not responding totally to the medicines because of the viral infections and pollution. If the child is having a recurrent problem, it is better to remove the adenoid tissue. If there is a turbinate hypertrophy, we can easily reduce the turbinate size with the coagulator. Both will help the patient and their breathing will improve and their blocked nose will go away. Doctor, there are no more questions. Okay, ma'am. Do you want to end the session? Okay, ma'am. Sure. Hmm.